Hello there, my name is Michael Hasenblas. I'm the head of the Linked Data Research Center at Derry and Right Galway. And today I would like to walk you through the Linked Data life cycles. Thank you for your support from uh, Lettis Support Action and the Lot 2 project. Now, in the following, I'm going to argue that the Linked Data ecosystem, in fact, is an example of a real world data space. What is a data space? Well, on the one hand, we have uh, heterogeneous data sources such as a relation database or a web service or LDAP or what else. We have, a, have to deal with a very distributed environment where the proximity to the data source is an important factor. Uh, we are mainly after finding and consuming the data and not so much about updating the data. Now what is a data source data space support platform and why does this matter? Now, if you look at the definition of a data space uh, and the DSSP, you have participants which are the data sources and relationships between them. For example, an original data owner might have a derived data source. What you typically find there are services including catalog and browsing, search, query, indexing and discovery. Now, I'm going to argue that the linked data ecosystem is in fact an open and standards-based real-world DSSP. Why does that matter? Well, open, as you can guess, from the web means everyone can say anything about anything. And standards-based means, at the end of the day, it is interoperable. I took the freedom to um, put the linked data stuff here in a figure I took from Franklin, uh, Halevi and Myers' uh, Sigma 2005 paper that shows you how, uh, in terms of proximity and semantic integration linked data, uh, be it in the enterprise or uh, applied to open data, uh, fits in there. So the range is from the lower left corner um, relational databases, for example, which um, are under your control, your desktop, your server, whatever, up to uh, the right upper corner where you have web search, Google, for example, uh, which is uh, has a, a far um, administrative proximity and a rather low semantic integration. Uh, linked data, as you can see, um, what I understand uh, uh, is positioned on the very high end of the semantic integration and can range from uh, middle to rather far administrative proximity. But what is linked data? Well, Thankfully, Tim Berners-Lee put together the linked data principles in around 2006 and identified four main things that you have to consider if you want to participate in that linked data web. First, use your eyes to identify things in your data, where things could literally be anything. It could be a person, a car, a book, uh, a gene, but also more abstract things like love or war or other concepts like that. While the first principle is really essential to being able to talk about these entities or things, the second one is more concerned regarding access uh, to descriptions of the things that are identified by certain URIs. So the second principle says use HTTP URIs uh, over, for example, a URN like an ISBN number, because then people and machines can actually look them up or dereference, as we say in the linked data world. Now, when a URI is looked up, um, you would typically expect that there is some description of the thing uh, identified through that URI. Um, we obviously already have that now on the web, uh, which typically is an HTML page or PDF or whatnot else. Um, additionally, we want uh, in the linked data setup uh, some more structured description of that object. That could be RDF, could well be OData or Microdata. Now, the fourth principle really is about the web. Why is the web uh, such a success or become such a success? Well, very simply because there are links between the documents, between the pages, and um, you can you know, uh, follow those links and find out more um, related information. Now, that is a very important issue, and I'll come back to that uh, later on. The Linked Open Data Cloud. Linked Open Data essentially means applying these linked data principles to real-world, open, available data, such as Wikipedia, then you end up in Deepipedia, GeoNames, uh, and so on and so forth. So there are currently some 200, over 200 data sets out there, as we speak, 
uh, providing some 30 billion triples uh, and over 400 million interlinks between each of these data sets. Um, if you look at these uh, bubbles here at that linked open data cloud, each of these circles represents one data set, which means someone, um, organization or individual, has published that data as one uh, data set, and each of the errors essentially means that, uh, that one data set has entities which are linked using semantic links, uh, essentially technically RDF properties, uh, pointing to entities in other uh, in another data set, which quite often are uh, our same as links, which essentially states that there are same entities here and there, for example, um, a city in, in Dpedia, um, same as a city in GeoNames um, or, or other data sets, but also perfectly can, can be other uh, semantic links, uh, including author, for example, between DPLP and Dpedia, um, or uh, location, for example, uh, some city in, in Dpedia is uh, located at a certain location uh, provided by GeoNames. Some stats, which essentially show you that uh, the majority, as we speak, the majority of the triples actually comes from the governmental domain and, and then geographic domain. However, if we look at link distribution, you would essentially learn that the majority of the links between the data sets uh, is being provided by the life sciences uh, area, healthcare, life sciences, drug discovery, such like. Um, on lot-cloud.net uh, slash state, you will find more of these stats and you can uh, drill down uh, as you wish and, and find out more uh, about um, the, the data sets.